Hi, everybody. Thank you for being here. It's Debbie. Um, welcome to the segment Chat with Deb. Um, as you know, I'm Debbie Leno. I'm also known as the Inner Peace Coach, and I blend my skills as a certified integrative health coach with my uh, MAC practitioner skills and with some yoga, and I blend those together to create uh, sessions for my clients that will really help walk them through inner conflict and and guide them towards more joy and happiness in their life. I'm also the founder of Lumer Life Wellness and coaching and creator of The Ageless Woman. And as you might have guessed, my passion is having conversations with exciting, wonderful, everyday women who have stories to share, that are doing some cool things, that have had some really big experiences. And I love to invite them here to share their stories with us. And I think that that's an important thing to do. So um, my guest today is joining me from Fort Worth, Texas. Her name is Tracy, and she is the author of Unapologetically Gray, which is a topic of our conversation, my personal favorite topic, aging powerfully and gracefully. Just a little something about Tracy. Her and her husband, Frederick, are also their co-founders of their professional life coaching business, Your Chosen Pass. She holds an international coach federation credential as an associated certified coach. She's also a published author of her book, Unapologetically Gray. And Tracy and Frederick are gray hair models as well. You um, kind of kind of tell she's so beautiful. Why wouldn't she be a model? And her husband is just as charming. So their message is to show that gray haired people are young at heart, vibrant, fit, attractive, prosperous, the Byerly duo, <laughs> they share four children and a grandson, and they live, like I said, in Fort Worth, Texas. Welcome, Tracy. Thank you. Thank you for having me today. And Ooh, my pleasure. I'm so happy to be here with you. Mm, where do we start? You have a delicious story from beginning to end. So let's just start by um, you telling us your story. Where did it all begin for you? Oh my goodness, I have to take it back to the age of 12 because that's significant. At that time, we were getting the box relaxers in our hair and my mom had no idea that it was a bad perm that time because who would know until you put it in, but nevertheless, it took our hair out. So mom had to cut her short. I was in the sixth grade at that time and I was teased unmercifully. I was called body lock, a uh, baldy locks. And not only that, I was this big around. So I was called stick and a whole bunch of other ugly names. So as you can imagine, there was something about my self-esteem that was ruined then. And then it went all the way into adulthood. Now, fast forward, I am in my basically early to mid forties and my hair starts graying quickly. My family, we gray prematurely. So for me, it was no big deal, but I kept hearing things like, you're too young for all that gray hair. You know, you should really dye your hair. You would look so much more prettier, so much more younger, so much more blah, blah, blah. If you would just dye your hair, I remember a friend, he had a little show thing he was doing on his video. He said, look, Holmes, I want to have you as my co-host, but you got to do something about that gray hair. <laughs> Needless to say. Wow. So, but I went out on a date and I was told how beautiful I was, but you really need to do something about that gray hair. So I was having a moment in the mirror about then. I said I was 42. 43, I was somewhere in there, between 42 and 43. And it was like, you know, this gray hair is really not bothering me. And if I was to get married to a man and God forbid I get sick or we can't afford to do my hair, this is who he's gonna wake up to every day. <laughs> I just want like me as I am. And at that point, it was just like a screw the world. I went into total rebellion. If you don't like my hair, don't look at it. It was rough for me because I was a single parent going to college, trying to keep everything going. And it was either choose survival or looks. 
survival won out because who can afford $80 to $100 every two to four weeks to get their hair done? And not to mention, I decided not to do relaxers anymore. I was going natural. So that was a double transition whammy for me. Yes, 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 yes. yes, yes. And how much more healthy for you to stay away from all that product? Yes, it was. I, at first I said I never dyed my hair, but it was brought to my memory. Yeah, you did one time. It had to be like in my late thirties, early forties. I vaguely remember, but my hair grew back so fast was probably the reason why I said, yeah, no, I can't do this. Um, but with that, I began to learn a little bit more about myself. And that's the most important part. I began to learn about the gifting that was in because we spend so much time decking up this outside. And I like to equate it as a house. A lot of people spend a lot of time on the outside of the house, the yard, everything looks beautiful. However, there's some hoarding going on. There's some hoarding going on of very negative comments that were spoken way back. Not only that, there are some hidden jewels and valuables that are tucked away and buried somewhere that emphasis was really never placed on. And then there are some empty rooms. In other words, <laughs> sometimes we are just kind of shallow. We look great on the outside, a little empty on the inside. I can speak this because those were all three things for this woman. So I had to deal with getting the negativity out. It is so much more than just letting your hair grow natural. It is so much more than that, isn't it, Tracy? Yes, it's, it is. It's, it's deep work. People don't realize it, but it is deep work. You have to look inside yourself differently. Yes, yes. It is true. Y'all, this, all of this, how we're built, is nothing more than the package and the wrapping paper. This is just the bow on top. The true gift is on the inside. Oh, girl. People yes. are talking negative. They've just missed a true gift. Do you know who it is and what it is? Yes. You know, it, it's a surprising, you know, in our culture, I asked my, just as a test, I asked my five-year-old grandson, do you like Grammy's hair? He says, yeah. I said, do you like it a lot? He goes, well, I like your dark hair better. <sighs> and I said, you do? I said, how come you like my dark hair better? He goes, well, you were much more beautiful. <laughs> you are much more beautiful. And I thought to myself, I've got some work yet to do on the young crowd. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But at five, and he hasn't heard any, it's, he hasn't heard anything, I don't think, on the outside world yet about things like that. But yeah. Wow. I'm determined to break that concept. Me too. Me too. And I have to speak to you all. And I know Debbie is in agreement with me. Did you all know that we are called to be models? Ooh, talk about that, Tracy. Tell us about your dream. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you about that too. <laughs> when I and about the man too. Oh, yes. You got lots, you got lots to share. <laughs> yes. Actually, my dream was to be a model, but at that time, industry standards, I was too short five three and three quarters i actually managed a modeling troupe in my home but i wanted to be a print model well i abandoned those dreams and so moving on with life adjusting hair i've now become a model of a different kind i'm modeling something that people are considering very controversial how to wear that gray hair with proudness and age 
gracefully. I mean, I got the little crow's feet. I think they're kind of cute. And anymore, I began to love myself. Love found me and that man in there. He loved the whole package, the gift on the inside, as well as the package and the bow on top. And there's something real exciting. You know, you're walking into places. Society already does not like aging your gray hair. And you just kind of pop on up in there all confident. And I see the looks. They're looking at me like, who does she think she is? <laughs> Confidence is sexy, y'all. It is. It is. It's and really how you think about yourself, isn't it? Yes. yes. Yeah. And they, they can't help but give compliments. And you are beautiful. Your hair is so beautiful. <laughs> and, and so you you, st you have the gift of having very young skin. I just have to remark on that. When you have, when you grow, when you get gray and decide to gray in your earlier years, it's so phenomenal because women don't realize it, but in their 40s, even in their 50s, their skin is so beautiful because it does change after 65. I'm here to tell you, in my 50s, my skin looked like I was in my 30s. Um, and so it does change, but that's okay. I mean, look at Helen Mirren. There's so many beautiful women out there that show age and still are just amazing women and very powerful and very beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, but you've got that that double gift of gorgeous hair and young skin. You're so, Thank you. I'm so envious. Yes, that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, I say jeans and, and Mary Kay and coconut oil sometimes. Um, but thank you. Thank you. So you got the man and you became a model, which was your dream. Yes. Came to it, could you, okay. So when were you aspiring to be a model? Like 20s, 30s? Where was that? 16. 16. So at 16, did you ever in your wildest imagination that you would be this beautiful gray-haired model on the cover of a magazine? Or, I mean, you just wouldn't, right? But here yeah. you are. So good to so you. I couldn't model, so. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I love the message that it's held, ladies, it is never too, never too late. You're never too old to do anything you want. And even if you don't make it on, my husband's on a billboard in Pennsylvania somewhere, um, and we're all over. And breast cancer people love us. But what I talked about being a model is you have a choice to leave a legacy for the people behind you. They're watching you age. Do they grow up and be like, ooh, <laughs> I don't wanna be like him or I don't wanna be like her and run from aging like you do? Or do you leave a legacy where my mama, my grandma, my auntie, my whoever, they age gracefully and they looked beautiful in the process. Whether you chose to sign up to be a model or not, you are. And how you handle your aging process affects everyone around you. That is so true. I think what I makes it really that. challenging for, for some women is when yeah. their health is failing. So when the health is failing, that, that brings about a whole different dimension to the aspect of aging, whether you're in your 40s, 50s, or, you know, or whatever. But um, keep yourself healthy, as healthy as you can. Keep that immune system strong. Do whatever it takes to stay healthy because, man, when you lose your health, it's, it's, it's a lot harder to keep everything else joyful when your health is, um, you know, when your health is, is not what it should be. So protect your health. Protect your health. That is, like, more important than, oh, than all of this. Exactly. That's where it goes into the inner us, our souls and our spirits. Because again, we dress this up all day long, but what's going on on the inside? Yes, you could very well be devastated about illness. Yeah. Yeah, that's another, that's another thing. You know, how do you, and that's another way to model to your family or to your your friends or whatever. 
um, how you accept and manage those kind of things that can pop up in your life. You know, are you going to, how are you going to handle it? And yes. so how you do that has a lot to say and it can really encourage other people. Yes. You know. All for the healing of your soul, getting past the outside. That's what I had to do. You know, for me, maybe not an illness, but, you know, Debbie and I have talked. I had been in two abusive marriages before my soulmate. I had to get counseling because I was sick on the inside. My man picker was broke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my man picker was broke. I love that. It's <laughs> broken. <laughs> I had to get oh, some healing. <laughs> Why do I keep picking the same thing over and over again? Yes. Yeah, that's, that's so true. Oh, that's funny. My man picker was broke. I love that. I'm going to use that. Please do. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. We have some Facebook comments over here. I, I, um, I don't know who the Facebook people are because, unfortunately, on StreamYard, it doesn't tell me who is putting in the comment. It says, Tracy, I love your story. You're a lovely lady. Um, that seems to be the overall message I hear over and over. The inside of the house, hidden jewels. You just have to find them. Well said. Yes. And, you know, you said that the other day. And, oh, man, I love that. That just so resonated with me when you talked about that. I love my gray hair. Debbie convinced me your hair is amazing. Oh, thank you, whoever that is. Thank you. Oh, that's wonderful. Okay. So let's see, we've got the 12-year-old the that has a stream of negativity and unfortunate comments. And, and are kids cruel, by the way? I, I think we're grooming kids to be less cruel and more kind. This is what I'm hoping to see in our society. I feel like it's going that direction. I hope so, because they have adults that are very cruel as well, too. Who need so oh, Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is true. This is true. It's a, it, a lot of it starts in the younger years, what you see modeled in front of you, right? All about that modeling. <laughs> it is. It is. Oh, my gosh. That is so true. But uh, And it's hard work. It's, um, it's lifelong work sometimes. Uh, and you don't even know that you're being triggered from those early thoughts and those early feelings. Um, you don't realize that, I don't think, until you're well into your 40s, maybe 50s, when all of a sudden the hits the fan and you're like, why do I feel this way? Or why does it hit me that way? Well, why does that comment so upsetting to me? Um, I've had those moments, you know, where I've had to recognize, ooh, that just triggered me. Why did that trigger me? And so that's where the work starts. And you ask the questions, right, Trace? Yes. You yeah. gotta ask the questions. Why did that bother me? Why did that upset me? You know, and that that's where it kind of starts. And so, we heal, we grow. That's the thing that I think that's the best thing about getting older. Yeah. Is the wisdom that comes along. Oh my gosh. Yes. Acceptance, patience, insight, wisdom. I could go on and on. Creativity blossoms and goes like on wildfire. Power. Power. We yes. Are and you had this wonderful man that really helped you fulfill one of your dreams, which was to write a book. Yeah. Can you tell us about it? I just ordered it, by the way. Yay. Unapologetically gray. I was supposed to have written for decades. And I walked in, it was April the 1st, 2018. And I told my husband, it's about time for the baby to be born. He said, what? I said, it's time for me to write a book. Frederick did not stand in the way. He made the way for me in that book. And I started writing on April the 1st. I love that. I love that. Thank you. He, he cooked. He held down the house. I was back in our room in our Zen corner. He would come bring a tray of food, take it out close the door. I would write anywhere from eight to 12 hours. I never knew what sciatic nerve issues were until I started writing that book. Yeah. I and when, so. 
Ooh. And when it got too crazy, he would take me away to their small family ranch in Southeast Texas, where there was hardly any reception. And it was on June 1st at 11.55 sharp when I was hitting save for the last time Unapologetically Gray was born. Oh, I love it. I'm so looking forward to reading it. I'm so looking forward to it. It, it inspires me because I've had a book in the back of my mind for a while. So I don't know when that baby will be born, Tracy. I will help be your midwife. <laughs> yes, I will help be your midwife. Thank you. I love that. I love yes. that. Yes. yes. We have another uh, input here on Facebook user. Hey, sisters, love the energy. I have a feeling that might be Susan. That sounds like her. Hey, sisters, love that energy. Thank uh -huh. you. Yes. Thank you. Create some good sisterhood energy here. Uh -huh. Because I love my sister over there. Yes. It's, it's been, you know, I just have to break away and say, I love how we can meet people all over the states all over the world and connect with really cool women yeah. um it doesn't matter what their age is. this is one of my favorite things about being ageless is that it does not matter your age whether you're young old in between it doesn't matter we're all women we all share a story we all have things to 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 do um things to share and I mean, connecting with you, and I connected with you, I think, through Susan's group, wasn't it? Yes. Through, uh, sister that. girl. Mm -hmm. Yes. 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 Die free to be me. Susan was one of my guests. Well, I think it was probably a month ago when I interviewed Susan. And she, she's great, too. And I love all the women I've met through that group. Uh, Silver Sisters and Die Free to Be Me. Uh, just wonderful women. And, and Tracy, I got to know you better when Susan had her first chillin'. Yeah, I think I knew of you, but then actually meeting you it was on the. It was it was the first chillin that Susan had, and I'm like, I like that girl. I felt the There's same way too. about her. <laughs> I felt the connection. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's so special. <sighs> Is there anything else about your walk, your journey that you'd like to share with us? I think with Unapologetically Gray, that became like a manual. And for those of you who choose to get it, there are places throughout the book where you can journal so that you can go on your own journey. But what's most important, when you have other, I'm going to call them concerns regarding aging, you know, your finances might be an issue. You might be facing some health issues or it's just plain fear. The other two, tangible. Fear, oh, we can attack that because what are you afraid of? It hasn't even happened yet. Yes. And then joy. You know, we're going to go pick up our new shirts today because, you know, we also have a T-shirt line. I'm sure you guys can see that gray hair. Gray hair is my tiara. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Thank I love you. it. The new one says, I let myself and my hair glow, not go. <gasps> oh, well, you know what? I love that shirt. That is <laughs> Did you come up with that saying yourself? I love that. I had to shorten it so it would fit. That's powerful. <laughs> Thank you. During this pandemic time, it Creative. uncovered a lot of things. No pun intended, but I heard a lot of, oh, I just let myself go. Oh, I'm just going to let it go. No. Let's reframe that to help you in this journey. You let it grow. You let it glow, grow, glow, but you're not letting go. Aging does not mean that you're just, oh, just make me comfortable until I die. No, you have more time to live. Change your focus. You're not going downhill. You're going uphill. Yes. Fun every step of the way. I love it. 
I love it. For anybody <laughs> out there who ha wants to go through that journey, oh, wow, please connect with Tracy and Susan. There's a whole bunch of sisters out there that'll support you 100% with your journey if that's something that you really want to do. Right, Tracy? Yes, we got you. We got you. Yes. Oh, I'm getting that shirt. <laughs> I think it's today. great. Yes, we're picking them up today. Yeah, that's awesome. I love that. Thank you. So, I mean, I could I could continue talking here because uh, it gets that way sometimes. So, but I want to try to have you circle around and what would be your final message that you would really love to give out there i know it has something to do with your passion yeah so what is your what is your parting message to our viewers our, my parting message is that we are here to show that gray-haired people can be fit strong young at heart full of vitality attractive and prosperous that's what we're here for that's what we're here to model that is such a great message that's a great message and i think that it's important for us to um really come behind our younger sisters and say you know what it is okay you know there's a more light at the end of that tunnel than you're thinking um it's just a matter of the perception that we've been raised to think you know just like when we were in our what teens or maybe earlier when we heard that commercial you gotta wash that gray right out of your hair you gotta wash that gray <laughs> right yeah 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 we're going to be spending time attacking that just changing your thinking and your thinking about aging here real soon absolutely absolutely oh my gosh and you on when i go on those pages that you guys have and i see all the gorgeous women out there with the beautiful i mean i'm envious of some of the grays out there i'm serious you know you've got some that are like white and black and and all these beautiful shades of silver in between i'm like wow that is so striking so beautiful yeah, yeah. but again it's all our own journey our gray it's like our fingerprints. Mm. Eras are made specifically for us. No one has one like our tiara. Now, if your tiara isn't fitting right or doesn't look right to you, maybe you can do a cut, a style, or something to adjust it. But you never see a queen with her head held down low. Hold your head up high. Work that tiara, queen. You earned it. Reign in your majesty. Ooh. Tracy, you just gave me goosebumps on that one, girl. That was strong. That was strong. Yes. Thank you for that. That's that was woo. I'm gonna listen to this over again just so I can hear that part. That was very inspirational. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, is there anything else that you would like to cover before we decide to wrap it up and say goodbye to our viewers? Oh, for those of you who don't know, and you can follow Tracy with an I, Demos Byerly, or go to the Unapologetically Gray business page. My husband and I are going to be doing a workshop together, and the name of that workshop is called The Art of Becoming Unapologetically Gray. Ooh. This is for those that are well here it's a three hour personal development workshop on embracing your age loving your grace and finding yourself at every stage even when the whole world tells you you're crazy and this is also for men and women who are intrigued or terrified about the idea of gray. yes i love that that is that's great yes thank you for that Thank you for that. We could post more of that information if you want to in our chat on the Facebook page. But uh, yeah, that's so exciting what you guys are doing. So exciting. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. 
Thank you for your work. Oh, you're welcome. And thank you for yours. Yours is much needed in the world. Thank you. Yes. Well, folks, I, I think that wraps it up for this afternoon. Thank you so much for those that were able to jump on live and uh, for those who are going to hit the replay. If you want to comment, by the way, on the video, just hit hashtag replay so that we can definitely answer you or get back to you or, or interact with you in some way. So thank you all for being here. We appreciate you. Thank you. And thank you for having me, Debbie. Oh, my pleasure. <laughs> I'll let you know when the book arrives. Yes, please do. I will. All right. Bye now. You.